once in a while I look back at some of my old work. Some of it's a little cringeworthy, but many of the old projects that I did were really cool. And when I think about what I did in Illustrator then, some of those techniques are still effective methods to use today. That was the case for this project that I found a printout of. And I thought to myself, wow, I really like how I rendered those sequins. Fortunately, I was able to find the original file and I was able to open it and kind of click around in it and see what I actually did. And I gotta say, I was like, wow, okay, this still makes sense to me. Now, I know that there's many methods to create sequins in Illustrator, but I think that this method that I use is pretty effective, if I do say so myself. And I use something to create the bling factor, which I don't think that a lot of people have even considered or even tried. So let's talk about how I created this sequin top in Illustrator. The first thing I did was make the sequin shape. And I know a lot of people do it with a hexagon, but I usually just use the ellipse tool. And as you can see from the finished CAD, when you're viewing the presentation at actual size, you really can't tell the difference between the two shapes. Then fill the shape with solid color and make it into a brush. If your sequins need to fit into a specific area before doing anything else, I would suggest creating the shape it needs to go into if it's not already created. I usually make the shape slightly smaller than the actual shape it has to fit into. Most seamstresses will remove sequins from the seam allowance so that the sewing needle won't break. A lot of sequins now are plastic so you can sew right through them, but many sewers still remove the extra sequins. In any case, you'll have a little bit of space between the seam and the sequins. Next, lock the object as it'll be easier to do the next few steps if the object doesn't get in the way. Using the sequin brush, create a block to cover the area it will go into. I usually create one row of sequins, then use the transform again shortcut, command or control D to duplicate the remaining rows. Next, expand the sequins and ungroup multiple times. Then, before you deselect, add your gradient. The next thing I'm about to do may seem very manual and time consuming. However, it'll give the placement of your sequins a much more realistic appearance. Can you just create a mask? Of course, but I choose to do it this way so that none of my sequins look like they're cut off. I'm going to manually delete any sequins outside of the shape. And note that there may be some clusters of sequins that are still grouped, so you may need to do some additional ungrouping. There also may be some sequins that go a little bit past the edge of the shape or might be a little bit smaller than the shape, but that is the nature of sequins. You're not going to have perfectly aligned sequins in each row because of the shaping in your garment. So now that your sequins are in the shape of the object they should cover, you can get rid of the shape. Now, you want to create areas in the sequins that are a bit shinier to reflect the light hitting the garment. I used two additional gradients, one that was a little lighter gray and then one that reads more white. And I picked clumps of sequins to recolor in the new gradients. I will say that as I was doing this the first time, I'm pretty sure I used some sort of reference picture just to get an idea of how the sequins would normally appear and which areas to lighten so it's not so random. And if you're doing a lot of zooming in and out, that's normal. You really can't appreciate the overall appearance until you zoom out, but it's hard to select the individual sequins unless you zoom in. Once you've changed the color of the individual sequins, now you're ready to add the bling. To do this, create a white hexagon and then go to Effect, 
distort and transform, pucker and balut. Move the slider towards pucker and you'll start to see a new shape form. And make sure your shape is positioned over the sequins or solid color, otherwise you won't be able to see what's happening. But this simple shape is what creates the shiny look. Scale it down, copy and paste several over the sequins, especially over the areas where you've made the gradients brighter. You don't need to go crazy with them, but you can afford to be generous. And then of course, group the bling shapes with the rest of your sequins and then group the sequins with the garment. So I'm not really sure what made me think to do it this way, but I would probably use similar techniques if I had to do this again. And yes, I know it's a little time consuming, but spoiler alert, not everything happens fast and at the push of a button on the computer. Just like you sometimes have to put in the work when you do it by hand, sometimes you gotta put in the work when you're doing it on the computer too. But I do like the end results. And once you learn the techniques, it gets easier each time you have to do it again. Thanks for watching this week's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you found it helpful. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.